Hello to anyone who is watching this video. I am Brennan, who is also known as Sonam on Discord, and I will be the workshop head for the Godot Game Start program of NUS GDG. To get you up to date of whatever happened in the first lesson, all you need to do is to download the Godot game engine, which is announced here, and the export template for you to export the game in a game into an exportable executable. Lastly, all you need to do is to download from here the project file and whatever we have done so far. With this, you can get up to date of whatever has happened. To learn whatever has happened, all you need to know is that we have went through this document over here. This document has told you everything you need to know about how to operate the engine and what are the different UI elements and where are they to be found. It also includes a very simple script for you to get started on and get familiarized with the scripting language of Godot. With this, you should be getting up to date and be ready to join us for the next lesson. The reason why this, les uh, this part, this segment is post-recorded is because the first recording in Zoom was unfortunately cut out due to the recording failure and the fact that I was not able to connect the correct mic to the recording. With this, you should be able to get up to date and to be able to join us for the next session. Thank you very much, and we hope to see you soon. Okay, thanks. Sorry about that. Okay, so, um, yep, this is uh, any questions about uh, from Zoom also can ask. Uh, you can say out loud, I don't mind. And yeah, in order to get caught up, right, what you can do is that you can refer to the quick start guide. And then you can have a understanding of what's going on because uh, I went through in the past uh, 30 minutes or at least past one hour when the, when the lesson started. Okay, so yeah, basically uh, follow the instructions here and you can get started. Okay, so let's create a player now. Now, if you have not caught up, all you need to do is create a map scene, which is a generic node, and create a child. Now, this kinematic body will now complain. Okay, it's complaining that it doesn't have a shape. So same thing with everything else they've just done so far, give it a shape. So you give a, a child node, I can press Ctrl A, and give it a collision shape. Okay, so now you have a collision shape. It is nothing because now it's complaining that it doesn't have a shape. So let's give this player a nice looking shape. Let's make it a rectangle. Because I like rectangles. Okay, so all you do is that you don't want the player to be at origin. So you press W and then you move him again. And then oh yeah, move him away. And then you can make him move on this platform. Okay, so unlike the rigid body, right? If you play the, play the scene, you got, this guy won't fall. That's because rigid bodies have a defined gravity, whereas rigid uh, kinematic body does not. Okay, so what you want to do, right, is to start defining how you can take the input. For example, you want WASD to be your move, or you want your arrow key to be your move. Depends. So if you're playing maple story, then afterwards you want arrow keys because your WASD will be your skills. But if you're playing another game, then of course your WASD will be using the mouse, uh, your right hand will be using the mouse and your left hand will be using WASD. So let's create a script. There's this little small little button here that's quite hard to notice. It's called attach script. What a script is, right, is where you get to actually put all your source code. And that is where you define. Okay, so you press a attach script button. Hello. Huh? Yeah, let's go. Welcome. Okay, so uh, what you need to do is just refer to the Discord, uh, download the PDF, and then you can get started. Okay, currently we're uh, doing a kinematic body to do a player. Stupid zoom is still there. Okay, so what you have to do, right, is to make sure all the stuff are in default. Okay, now it doesn't really matter uh, what you want to put in here, but I'll just call this player. Okay, you can name it any uh, script that you want, it doesn't really matter. And what you do is that you can choose a default template. Okay, this will help you because as beginners, uh, it will be very useful to have a default template. So I'll leave everything here. Before you create a file, this is what they will brief you about. You say it will have a no uh, naming collisions and it will create a new script file. Okay, so let's create. What you notice is that you're in your file folder, right, your project folder, it has created a new file. Now this script file, right, is going to be, uh, it's not embedded inside your scene, okay, so it's a separate file. Okay, so if you delete the, the uh, script, right, then afterwards, uh, all, the, all the functionality will be missing. Okay, so make sure that you organize your files 
you know, have the pairs together, scene and scene and player pair together. Okay, so now you have this. So I explained in the PDF uh, what this means. If you've done um, object oriented programming, extend simply means to inherit. So what does this mean? It means that you will inherit all the properties of kinematic body. So in order to access the documentation, a very useful thing to have is to press hold control. Okay, so I'm holding control and I will click this. This will allow you to see the documentation. This is very useful. Okay, because now you actually get to see all the methods that is attached to it. Okay, so if I go back, and you can go back by pressing your fourth mouse button if you're using a gaming mouse, or you can just um, press this. Okay, so if you're here, you can press this. Or you can press this button here, which is at the top, and it's to go back. Okay, so it's to go back. So now, oh, this is so annoying. Okay, so now we have all this uh, sample text. If you use Unreal Engine or use any engine, actually, I'm not sure about Unity, but if you use Unreal Engine, in every game, Everything, how a game works, right, is that every single frame is going to be calculated. Now, it's called a video game for a reason. So that means that when you're running a game at 60 FPS, you're running 60 calculations, 60 frames per second. And in that one frame, you have a bunch of calculations. Now, what does it do in the calculation? Now, you look at your comments here, because this is a comment. It says here, call every frame. Now, you get rid of the comments. You can press Ctrl K. Or you can just delete the hashtag because hashtag just means comment. And it means that when you put a comment, it's going to be ignored. Uh, yeah. So if you get rid of the comments, you actually notice there's this function called process. If you use other game engines, they will also have a ready and a process function. So a ready function, right? This one up here is as they say here, it runs the code in this function Every single time the, the node is ready. In other words, if your node is empty or is like disabled, and then it enters the scene tree, this code will run. Okay. So if you want to you know and get started with your tradition, you can just say print hello world or something. And, and now you're a programmer because if you press the scene, you take apart this uh, window, you actually see that the console is being printed hello world. Yeah, you're a programmer. Yeah, if you're, if you, any, if any of you have not programmed before, okay, okay. Let's get rid of the game scene. So this is your uh, ready scene. Now, look at instead. Uh, you have the pass. Okay, so pass is simply just a, a word to say. Please don't do anything. Okay, and then you have the process. So if you want, instead of running one time. You want it run every single frame, which is going to be computationally expensive because your CPU is going to run something like 50 times per second. So uh, try not to put all your code here. Use it sparingly and use it wisely. You can print your code here. Yeah, mine's a country. You can print your code here. So you run the game, and what you notice is that if you pull apart the window, Hello World is being printed every single frame. And uh, Cursor is going crazy. Yeah, so that means that use it wisely. Don't use it all the time. And make sure that you only put the necessary code there. So starting off, right, let's get rid of this process function because uh, typically there are two process functions. In fact, there are three. Okay, it's very confusing. I don't know why Goyo does this, but you want to do something called a physics process. Okay, so like I explained in the documentation, these processes, right, these functions, right, the reason why they're here in the first place is because they're defined in the game engine already. Okay, so all these are built in. You can tell by the fact that they have this underscore here, which in Python means that it's a private variable, something, something. Yeah, but it just means that uh, it's going to be defined by the game engine. It's predefined. You didn't define it. So let's have another predefined function. Now, if press underscore, and then it'll give you a bunch of functions. Then you'll be like, wow, there's so many. So let's try, and you can actually see there's a process data, delta, which is the same thing that is up there. So instead, right, let's choose physics process. Okay, so you have process, and then you have physics process. What's the difference? Is that the physics process is going to mainly deal with physics. And it's more optimized to actually deal with like physics uh, processing. So let's do that. Why? It's because we want to make sure that whenever the player moves, is going to be you know in line with the physics of the game. So Godot will now complain that there's nothing here. 
Oh, most of the time you want to press a pass, but let's actually define stuff. So the first thing you want to do, right, is to take in input. Now this is going to be a bit confusing, but how Godot takes in input, right, when we press the key, is that it has this class called input, okay? So you have input and it comes in green. What green means, right, is, or at least for me, because I, I define my editors and things like that, it means that it's a class, okay? So press dot because a class has a bunch of functions and member variables. And then you say, uh, is action just press, or is action press, just say is action press. Okay, so uh, let me go back. Is action press, is action. So you have these three things. In fact, you have a bunch of stuff, other stuff you can see over here, okay. Is action, oh yeah, you have a bunch of other stuff here. All right, you can even have you know joy con support, I mean like joypad support, you know, you know, could the cursor, the joystick, everything. So but we are using a keyboard and mouse. So let's try action. Now there's these three. Okay. So if you're familiar with HTML, whereby you play the game and on JavaScript, there is three types of stuff. There's just press, which means that I press the button and then the code will run once. Okay, if I keep holding it, it won't run again. Now then there's action pressed, which means I press it, right? As long as it's being held down, it will run every single frame. Okay, so I'm pressing it down around 60 times. Now another second pass, I'm still running it 60 times. Okay, and then another one is called just release. I press it, nothing happened. The moment I release it, nothing happens. Okay, so those are three differences. Let's choose if action press. Of course, if you press WASD, right, you want to continuously move. Okay, so that's what we are going for. Now you have a bunch of suggestions which show you what kind of action you want okay there was only up down left right home button and page down page up all those buttons on your keyboard then you'll be like asking you know what if i want my button to be like k or like a or like d well i'll tell you how to do it okay so let's define up all right so currently this is going to be a function because it has a bracket you see that it's going to be a function that returns or false, which is a boolean function. Okay, so it's a boolean function. So that means that if I want it to actually only be there when it runs, right, I'll have a if statement. Okay, so it's like Python. You just put if and then you put a colon. Then you're done. Okay, I can put a pass here for fun. Okay, so that means that I can do something here. So let's just print another something. So I press up, for example. This is just a demonstration of you show that I actually press up. Okay, so I'm going to run the game. I'm going to pull this aside. And I don't know why it's not clearing because I, oh yeah, hold on. There's a process function. Okay, so another thing right, is that since we have the physics process, we don't actually need this anymore. So we can delete the process function. And the comments to come in longer. Okay, so I'm going to press, I'm going to hold, uh, play the game again. I'm going to press up, which is the up key. And you notice that it's printing like crazy. Okay, so that means that the if statement actually managed to successfully run. Now, instead, you'll be like, hey, I want WASD, I don't want this maple story stuff. So, what you do, right, is that you actually go to project site. All right, it's a bit confusing at first, but what it's actually supposed to say is that in the project settings, in this project, I want my key binding to be WASD. Okay, so you go search the function, you go search key, or you can search, uh, Shortcut and then okay, no, this one, sorry, not key. You search shortcut, just keep trial and error. Uh oh, sorry, oh here. It's input map. Okay. So go to the tab, right? There's this tab here. Okay, go to input map instead. So you go to input map, and then you notice that there are a bunch of keys here. Okay. So if you want your up right to be something else, then you click on this little edit button here. Okay. So you can edit it. And then you can change the up to W. But if you want the up to still be you know, going up, then you can keep this. And then you can press this little button called add event. So what this means is that you are going to add another key. Okay. So instead of using physical key, we choose key. You can even have a joy button, uh, you know, your PS4 controller, everything here. Okay. So you can have the key. So let's do a key. And let's press W. Okay. So now it's going to be defined as W. You can even have modifier keys like shift W, you know alternate shift tab or something or like control alternate dd or something okay but you can press w and then what it does is that now if i press w or if i press up it's both considered a ui up okay 
uh, let me answer the question. By the way, if FPS is above uh, 60 process cost more than 60 times a second, uh, physics process will still run uh, only run at 60 unless you change it. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Okay. Uh, all right. So now I can press uh, W and then it will um, be a control. It will be a W. Okay. So now let's do something interesting. Let's actually make this guy move. Okay. A uh, typical way to make something move, right, is to actually make the position move. Okay. So I say position. Then it will light up blue. You'll be like wondering how the heck does it tell that it's actually something that is there and not like something I define. For example, I can define something called, you know, uh, I don't know, Aaron Jaeger or something. Oops. And then, how does it actually, oops, much deeper stuff. And then how does it actually tell that it's going to be something that is there? Okay, so if I type in the variable, nothing's going to be happening. That's because it's a user-defined variable. Whereas this position, it's going to be a variable that is a member of your currently editing class. Okay, so that's why it's lighting up this blue. I call it cerulean, cerulean blue. Okay, uh, if you want to edit the settings, by the way, it's very fun. I had a lot of fun doing this. Okay, you can actually change the highlighting, and I changed. I chose it to be the most obnoxious colors. So you can choose anything, uh, any of the colors that you want. This will define the type and types of. Uh, colors that you want. So what you notice is that this color is actually talking about a member variable color. Okay. So this member is this is a, this guy's a member variable. In other words, you'd be asking what is this member variable of? It's a member of kinematic body today. Why? Why is it not a member of diamond or platform one or anything else? Well, that's because you attach your script to this guy. You attach your script, right? Whatever uh, script they attach to, right? would mean that this functionality, all the variables, functions, and everything will actually be tied to this guy. Okay, no one else. So I put the position here. So what is going to edit, right, is actually this guy. I wish Zoom can get lost, but it's here. So you'll notice that if you select a kinematic body, right, you can actually still see everything. Even though you're not on the 2D uh, viewport, you're actually in the script viewport. So you can actually still inspect everything. So my kinematic body 2D, right, has this guy called position. Exactly word for word position. Okay. So if you notice that you can actually, can actually change the other guys, you know, rotation degrees. Okay. Let's change rotation degrees. Also. Okay. So rotation degrees is suggested here. But all the member variables, right, will show up in this little window that you have. So if I want the scale, SC, scale up there. And this dot P. So if you notice this guy, uh, Crap. Okay, never mind. This is dot P, which means property. There is a dot Fn, which means function. Okay, so I have a, I'm going to choose the position. And then it's going to get the position that is currently there. So if I am 83 and 41, right, this position, this variable will hold 83, 41. And 83, 41, right, how, how, how does it hold two variables? Well, that's because it's a vector 2D, which means that it's, uh, it's holding two values at the same time. Okay, so now I want to change it. Okay, so if I'm going upwards, right, what you notice in Godot is that up is negative. Unlike your 2D, you know, your maths whereby up is positive. In Godot, it's, or at least most game engines, like almost every game engine has down is positive. Okay, so if I try to go upward, right, I want to make it negative. Okay, so I'm going to press dot y, which means that I'm going to define the y axis. So, because it's a two vector 2D, right? It doesn't actually, it needs to accept two values at once. I can't say, I can't just say plus equals two. You notice that Godot will complain. Okay. Why? It's because it's an invalid type. The type it's trying to accept is vector 2D, which means that I'm going to have to pass in two elements, two, two numbers into it. Whereas the type I'm pressing is just a normal integer, which doesn't make sense. So what I want to do, right, is I want to transform this guy he okay, has two ways of doing, about doing it. Uh. What you can do, right, is that you can actually make whatever you're adding into it, into a, uh, you're actually adding a vector. What you do, right, is that you call the struct or the contractor or the class vector2. And then now we'll accept two values. Okay, so vector2 is a contractor or a class or a struct or whatever language they use. It will actually accept two values. So you actually say, please input the x value. I'm going to put in 
arrow because I don't want it to move in the x direction in the x axis at all. And in the y direction, I want it to move upward, which is negative. So let's say I want to move it negative two units up. Yeah, I press negative two here. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, right, is to access the y of it, the y of the position, which is basically this guy only. Okay, this is y only. And u plus equals. Okay. So uh, it's either one or the other. So you can comment out one then by pressing Ctrl K. Or you can Ctrl K the other guy. And so let's Ctrl K the, let's comment out the first guy. Else you'll be moving four units upwards. Okay, so let's play. And I forgot to put negative. Okay, it's negative. Okay, let's play. And if I press the up key, it's moving up. Yay, it's gone. Okay. And let's make it like a bit more obvious. Okay, let's let's make it let's press up and then it moves down. So if I press up and it will move down. And what you notice is that it actually just passed through the entire um what's it called? It passed through the collision shape. Why? Well, it's because you actually didn't define the thing. So all your code that you put inside, right, won't actually collide with anything. So even though I, the kinematic body right has a mask and a layer of one one. It ignores all physics. Okay, so that's the power or like kind of the advantage of kinematic body. You want your player to face through a wall and you know e clip, you can do that by putting the um by having the code override your physics. Okay. So what you actually learn right is that this is not going to be useful most of the time because you want your player right to move and not like face through the wall. So what we will do later, right, is going to be something a bit more advanced and something that everyone uses to control their uh kinematic body. Okay, so any questions? Okay, no more questions. Okay, so instead of moving the position, right, what we can do is to uh, do something called a velocity. Uh, but for now, let's uh, fill in the other um. The other direction. I have up, down, left, right, right. So what you can do is just copy and paste. Oops. Copy. And I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Sorry. I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste it four times. Okay, three times. So one and two and three. Okay, so now all you just need to do is just turn to the four direction. Okay, so instead of ui up, I will have ui down, and down will be positive 2. Now I have left, so I'll be ui left. Okay, and then I will change it to an x in the negative direction. And then I have a right, so I will change it to a ui underscore right. And it's going to have a positive x in the, yeah, x in the positive direction. Okay, so now you just press the play button and you can move all directions. Yay, congrats. And in fact, you can actually kind of stop the diamond from falling. Wait, let, me, let me try to play this. It's quite fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let me try again. Okay. Yeah, I can just stop it. Yeah, okay, just click it. Uh, okay. Anyway, so uh, yeah, the physics are actually still there. It's just that you know you can face through some stuff. So what you also notice is that there's a bit of an unfair advantage, especially if you're trying to make a top down top down game, right? If you move, if you press up and uh, up and down, up and right at the same time. Okay, actually, let me show down and right at the same time. You're actually moving faster. Why? It's because you're actually moving at a, uh instead of two units per second, you're actually moving two square plus two square. So third entire thing is four. It third eight, which is something I can remember. But basically, third, two third two uh units, which is more than two. So you're moving two third two units fast uh fast uh, uh uh units per second, which is unfair. So what you can actually do right is something called normalizing. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to teach it now because it's it's kind of a niche thing. Uh. I mean, you want your your player to move in direct diagonal direction faster. That's up to you. But if you want to do it, it's something called normalizing. Okay, so this is specific to vectors, and I'll tell you about it later. Okay, so that's one flaw that we have right now. Another thing is the physics, and in order to fix that, what we can do right now is something called uh, velocity, uh, move and slide. 
Okay, so all games or all Godot games that are platformers or that are top down shooters, they will use this function called move and slide. You notice it here. Okay, you may be like wondering, how do I know? Well, you can go to the documentation. And what you notice is that the top, this guy belongs to kinematic body 2D. In other words, this function, move and slide, is going to be a method of kinematic body 2D. So what does uh, move and slide do? Well, you control click. It gives you a lengthy description of what it is. But let me just sign it up for you. It's a method, or it's a function, that helps you to move the, the, move the kinematic body while considering physics. OK? And it accepts all these arguments. The first argument it accepts is the linear velocity, and it's going to be a vector 2D. So let's define that right now. OK, so instead of passing a value, let's give it a velocity. So we can give it a velocity, but how do we determine this velocity? Well, we can determine it by creating a variable. OK, so like what Godot said here, you can declare all your variables here. Let's store our velocity in a variable, in a custom variable, a player defined variable. In other words, it's going to appear gray. So let's write here var, which is how you declare variables in code GD script instead of like using the, okay, actually, no, let's Python something else. So let's create velocity. It's not lighting up. That's because it's a user defined variable. Okay, so this variable, right, uh, it's going to have, it's going to accept anything. The moment you press something, you pass something into it, right? Then it's going to take a shape. Because if you if you do other programming languages, you have to define a shape, right? Uh, you have to define a type. You can actually do that in Godot, but you know some people are lazy, so you can actually just you can do this. You can say vector with a vector, vector two, and this will give it a type. Uh, it's not needed, but most programmers would recommend it. But it's okay. So let's ignore that. And now we have this variable velocity. Let's make it, okay, actually don't need. So every single time your physics process, right, delta, you want your velocity to be zero. Okay, every frame will be default to zero, unless, if you know, let's, let's move this elsewhere, if you know. Okay, let's leave it here. Okay, we have the velocity. Now we are going to make the velocity zero, zero, instead of giving it zero, right? Because it's a, it's zero is an integer. It's only holding one value. You want to make it have two values, x and y. Now you can define that you are using a vector 2D. So let's give it a vector 2D. Okay, vector two, it's going to appear green because it's a class. So open a bracket to give it the passing values to construct this vector. <laughs> let's give it zero, zero. Initially, it will not move unless you press up, down, left, right. Okay, so up, down, left, right, right. Let's change this position. Position uh, is not good because it allows you to face through walls. Let's have oh, uh, let's change our custom velocity. And what you notice is that uh, you should not pass in plus equals to. You should do the same thing as just now. Dot y, because y why why do you do that? Because your velocity is now a vector two, and therefore it shouldn't be able to take in a integer. It should be able to take in a vector. Oh, sorry, it should be dot y to access its y property and to pass it in. So you just replace everything. If you want to replace really quickly, you can press Control F and then you can actually you know it's Control R. Yeah, Control R. You can replace all positions with the word velocity. So you know every IDE will come with this. Uh. So it's a Control R to replace every single uh, instance of a variable. And then you can just press replace all and all of them will be gone. Okay. So what do we do with this velocity? Well, what we can do is that we pass in it into the move and slide. Now, how do you know that you're supposed to pass into move and slide? Like, how do you know what this move and slide does? Okay, the first argument it takes in is linear velocity. Linear being like uh, in the 3D space. So you pass in velocity and you're done. Okay. So if I am correct, this should work. It's not working. Okay, so uh velocity, move and slide, velocity. 
I think it's position. Velocity equals velocity. Let me refer to my code. Delta um stat plus equals okay and input down oh yeah it's gonna look move and slide velocity and velocity is going to move and slide factor up velocity change direction. I think it's something to do with the. Let me try. Whoops. Can anybody gonna convert my argument to vector, right? Argument one. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Vector. Upwards and it's going to do this process. Take in input strength, input vector, run state. Um, yeah. Input this line. Yeah, I will. Okay. Let's. Oh, this one. Okay. No. Okay, it works. Yes, thanks. All right, so what I did right wrong was the fact that uh, the velocity was being reset every single time. So the one frame you're moving to, but the next frame you're moving to zero again. But what another problem that I, you're currently facing, right, is the fact that this thing is like in zero gravity and it's not, not going to stop. Okay. So that's pretty fun. I mean, it's good for a space game. Currently, your, your object is flying everywhere. But it's not good because what you want to do is uh okay, the good thing is that now it won't face through the wall because now move and slide, right? It's going to be a built-in function that is introduced by Godot that will help you to prevent the uh prevent you from attacking uh to from facing through other physics objects. Okay, so to fix this zero gravity problem. What you can do is to give the reset the velocity every frame. Uh, do something called locking. Yeah. Uh, this is gonna be quite hard and complicated. So maybe I shouldn't talk about it right now. Okay, no, I'll talk about it. Okay. Let me see how to do the lock function again. Okay. So the And you look by look what look towards zero point one put on that would be vector the one velocity and get to zero okay let me see if this works Uh, 
Okay. But it's not really working. Okay, so we can ignore this for now. We will go through this another time. Okay, this one is going to be a bit more uh uh what's it called complicated because it's something called linear interpolation, which means that every frame right, you're trying to make this value uh go towards another value, but slowly and gradually. So imagine it's like a you know a third function or logarithmic function or exponential function, whereby you're decreasing that value by half every single frame. So that makes it such that it smoothly goes towards that value to zero. So for example, it's realistic. Right? If you're running and then afterwards you stop, you won't like stop dead track or you're like it's nothing too much force on yourself. And you can it's not possible to do that. What you have to do is that you have to break a while. So that breaking distance, right, is caused by lurping. Okay, so uh currently you can add this line if you want to we'll go through it another time. But what I want to go through right now, right, is something called adding the shape of it. So currently, right, there's nothing on, on your screen. Because we are actually enabling these visible collision shapes. What you want to do, right, is you want to uh, put in some assets. So, what you can do is that even if you're on Mac or you're on Windows, what you can do is that you can actually open the scene, open the project folder. So, you right click on anything on your uh, project folder and then you open show, it, show in File Manager. Showing in File Manager would now allow you to access any of the, the uh, folders here. Now I remember that I gave all of you a asset pack. It should be here. So if you have the Godo Game Start SX pack, right? Uh, all the assets are here. Okay. One thing you can do is that you can drag and drop it right into your project folder, and all your assets will be there. Okay. So you take the if you have extracted the folder already from the file from the zip file that I gave all of you, you actually just drag and drop this folder into your assets pack, into your projects folder. This is it a Windows 11 thing? I think it's a Windows 11 thing. Okay, never mind. Yep, and all your assets will be there now. Okay, so you open it up. Godot will be able to read everything here. So this is usually how game, uh, game developers uh, organize their folders. They first have the assets pack, and then they'll have all the assets, meaning the music, the art, everything anything that is done using a visual like uh, uh software editing or raster uh editing picture manipulating software right you put it under the art folder anything to do with music you put it in the music folder so let's check the art folder you have the player you have a player here okay what you can do is that you can actually drag any of the images into something called a sprite okay so let's create a sprite What's a sprite? It's not a drink, it's a item, it's a note that holds a picture. Okay, so you search sprite, right? There is an animated sprite and then there's a sprite. Let's choose a static sprite, which is the non-animated one. So choose a normal, normal one, you have the note here. Okay, so let's go back to our 2D viewport. You get to see the scene. In the sprite, currently the texture is empty, it doesn't have anything. What you can do is they can hold any of the items and you can drag and drop it into the texture folder. So now you have this guy. Okay. What you can do, what most game developers will do, is that they will try to extend the collision or hit shot the, the hitbox towards the shape of the person. So now it takes the shape of this guy. Right? So if this guy bangs his head on the ceiling, it will not be intersecting. Okay, so now you can actually move him. I'm still moving very slowly because of the lifting function. Yep. Okay. And that's why, yeah. Okay, so there's also other things you can do with the gravity and all the other uh, functions that you can put in, but this is one of the ways that you can put in a sprite. Okay, now there's also a bunch of other things that you can do. Most of the time, like you know, your games usually, if you lack uh, enemies, what they usually like to do is just change the color of it and call it a new, call it a new fighter, for example. Okay, so you go to modulate, this is going to be quite useful. You can go to modulate and then you can change the color of the person. Okay, so that's one way to change the effects. Okay, so I got this sprite from the SX pack. So you go to your Discord. Yeah, yeah. And I have it on as the third pointer. Yeah, it's okay. All right, so that's how you import sprites over. Now, notice that there are a bunch of idle animations here. Well, instead of making a static sprite, right, what we can do is now add an animation 
Now, this is the uh, simplest form of animation in Godot because there's a bunch of very complicated ones. What I can do is actually delete this node for now, and then you can add something called a animated sprite. Okay, now the animated sprite will now complain that it doesn't have a resource again. Okay, so in this resource, right, now what you want to do is that you want to create a new sprite frame. Okay, so you create these new sprite frames, right? Instead of dragging everything from the file explorer to here, instead, what you do now is that you create this new resource, and then you access everything in it. So now you have this uh, folder, and then you call it an idle animation. Why? It's because all the files here are idle animation. Okay, so now you have this idle animation. You drag and drop everything from here to here, and you have all the frames imported. So all these are the frames of the player. God. Okay, all these are the frames of the player. And what you notice is that what this folder, okay, this window, right, appears at the bottom of your screen. It's called sprite frames. Usually, if you're not selecting a node or a property like that, right, it won't actually appear here. Okay, so in order to get appear here, right, what you do is that you select any of the properties, like an animated sprite, and then all this will come out. Okay, so animated sprites. Now you can actually change the order of the animations, all of that. So let's change this to make sure that it is playing. So if I make it play now, you notice that a person is breathing, like an idle animation would. Okay, so that's the basics of creating an animated sprite. Usually this is only used for 2, uh, 2D animation because uh, usually you have a repeating like walk cycle, uh, something to animate the player like that. Okay, so now you can actually notice that the person is actually moving. I mean, like, you know, breathing. All right, so that is it for the animation. Okay, there's a bunch of other assets. You can even import music. And I just noticed that my music is not playing the entire time. Oh, well. Yep, so this was the same music I used in my game in the, in the title screen. And what you can do, right, is actually add a note for the music. Okay, so if you're interested, it's called the uh, what's it called? Yeah, music okay. audio stream player. Okay, so you can do this. And what this does, right, is actually you can define a space in which this uh, audio plays. Now you can import any uh, stream you want. You can put anime songs, cartoon songs, anything you want inside. So currently it's in, but whatever, whatever you want to put inside, right, you have to put inside a project folder first so it can be imported. All right, so you put this MP3 here and then now it will play. So if I play the game, it will play this very loud music. Okay, never mind, not yet. Let's pick it autoplay. And yeah, start the game. So let's make it autoplay. And then it's damn loud. If what's the time? You want to change the volume, you can change it here. Okay, now it'll be softer. Okay, so those are the types of notes that you can actually do to, to make the uh basic audio play. You also can control all of it uh, later on. Okay, so now the most important thing we have to get, get to do is to move the player. Okay, so after showing you all the basics, now we have to get into something called, um, what's it called? Yeah, actually I'll solve the, the movement later, but let's do something called instancing right now. So let's say you want to spawn a bullet. Because most of the time uh, in games, the exciting stuff is stuff that moves. So what you want to do, right, is that you want to create a scene that is going to be used later. Okay, so currently, our if we want to make this player shoot a bullet to the right, we won't want this bullet to be this node. Uh, we will know that we want to create a bullet node. Okay, a node that contains a bullet, the sprite, its uh, physics, body, its collision shape, all of that. But it's not going to appear in the map yet until you press a button. Okay, so to do that, what you want to do is that you want to create a new separate scene. Okay, this bullet will be separate from this map. What you do is that you can press this little press button to create a new scene because this is where all your scenes are top. Else, you can press this scene and you can create a new scene. Control N. So let's create a new scene. This will be a 2D scene. Okay, you can do this, or what you can do, right? Instead of like following the templates that you have, you can just share it at a node. We know that it's not going to be a generic 2D scene. We will know that it's going to be a, a physics body or a kinematic body. For example, you want a bullet to have physics, like an arrow. You can do a rigid body, 
or you can do an area 2D. Okay, area 2D, right? That one is a little bit more flexible than the rigid body because the rigid body has physics. And sometimes they want your, your projectile to have physics. So let's go with the area 2D. Create an area 2D. And now we'll complain that it doesn't have a shape. So let's give it a shape. And same thing, rinse and repeat, give it a collagen shape. Now give it a collagen shape, complain again. Now give it a actual shape. So let's make this a arrow. Okay, so it might be tempted to choose the ray cast, the ray shape. But let's not do that. Let's make it a flat rectangle again. Else you can make it into a triangle. That would be fine. Okay, so let's make it a rectangle. So in the origin, this is where you keep all your stuff. Unlike the map, right? You won't want to, you can actually keep everything in the origin. The map, what you want to do is you want to make all your map elements away from the origin because you can actually see it. But here, you actually don't need to. Because what we're going to do, right, is going to instance the scene. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take this scene and we're going to clone a bunch of it and then make it shoot out to the right. Okay, so that's how you create projector, for example. So we have this shape. Now let's squeeze it down, make it a bit narrower. And you can hold alternate to do it. And now it's a bit narrower. What you can do is that you can give it a um, shape. Currently, I don't have an asset for an arrow. So what I can do is that I can give it a texture. Okay, so you want to give it a flat color. What you can do is that you can add a child node and you can give it a, a rectangle, uh, something called a color rectangle. So this color rectangle is actually a UI element. What you can do is that you can flatten it down, move it towards the center and make it appear behind the collection shape to Okay, so uh, like I said in the documents, the higher you are in the tree, the uh, more behind you are. Okay, so I make it move behind so I can actually see the collagen shape. Now with this selected, I can still edit the, the look of it. So now that it's behind the collagen shape, right, you actually cannot select it anymore. What I can do is you can utilize your move key, your move tool, which is your W2. So you press W again and then you can move it. And what you can do is that you can scale it as well. So you scale according to the x-axis, and then you can scale it up to here. Okay, there are a bunch of other neat tools in your toolkit, such as to allow areas grid snapping, such that it will snap towards the you know, snap towards the grid. If I hold one button, okay, if I uh, move it, then it will move grid by grid. Okay, so that's how you activate smart snapping and grid snapping. Now that we have this texture rectangle, I will give it a color of red and it looks quite nice. And I'll make this collision shape 2D have some physics. So let's add a uh what's it called? A function, a script. So I'll call this script uh, arrow, for example, because that's what you want. Okay, so let's call this area 2D arrow first. Uh, all your notes should be named with capital letter because they are classes and classes are conventionally named with capital letters. So with this arrow class, now we attach a script to it. Call this an arrow.gd, for example. You can name it a bullet or anything one, and let's create a new script. This script is now a separate script from the one that you made before. Okay, so notice that if you are creating a game, you're actually dealing with more quantity of code of code files rather than a call like you know the of magnitude of having one file have a lot of lines. So now this thing has an area 2D. What you want to do is that you want to make sure that it has a uh, velocity whenever you shoot it towards your mouse direction. Okay. So what you want to do is that you take the uh, create a function called shoot. Okay. Why? Is because this function will now be called whenever you press the mouse key on your player in the normal scene and then this will make sure that you shoot it out in that direction so in this shoot what you want to accept right is a vector 2d that tells you the direction of where it's going to go so you say direction one of the parameters of this function would be the direction so with this shoot function what you have to do right if you are assuming they've been passed in a correct direction what you do is that you make sure that this uh, area 2D moves towards that direction. 
So for every frame that this uh, person is in, you move it towards that direction. Okay, so same thing with the velocity. Uh, what you do is that you create a variable velocity. Okay, this velocity is going to accept a vector to be much like the kinematic body from just now. And then your velocity now be a vector 2D that is going, yeah, it's going to be a vector 2D that accepts the mouse direction. So global mouse position. Uh, yeah, global mouse position. Instead of the local one, you want the global one. So if I press, if I point it, if I point it at the 2D and I point it here, it's going to give me a positive, uh, positive X and a positive Y. Okay, but if my note is here and I okay, if my note is relative here, right? And then I press it here, it won't actually give me a positive y because I'm actually pointing it left towards towards the node. Okay. So you want it to be a global mouse position instead of a local mouse position. Now go back to your script viewport. And you notice that this global mouse position doesn't accept any arguments because it's just gonna get the position. To get this position right, but this is just a vector in a 2D space. It doesn't actually have any uh, uh, value in it. So what you want to do is that you want to say move towards. Move towards? Yeah, move towards. What does move towards do? It moves towards, right? It moves uh, from one uh, float to another float. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry, this is, a, this is the wrong one. Not this one. It's a vector. Dot two words, dot direction, dot in dot. I can't remember what it is. So it's going to be a factor two D in that direction towards that direction. Okay, so minus off, then it'll be in that direction. Okay. Yep. So further, it will be. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yep. So we ending very soon. Uh, the moment we just uh get this first. So let's just make it such that the further you wait, uh, the, the further away your mouse is, the faster the velocity, the velocity is. It doesn't really make sense, but uh, we'll just have a roll with it for now because I'm running short of time. Okay, so we'll just have this shoot uh, function make the velocity in this direction. Okay, so now what you want to do, right, is that every single frame, we want this arrow to move in a direction. So by now you'll be familiar with the function to get the physics process. The physics process, what you want to do is that you want to make the position move towards the direction of the velocity. Every frame. Okay, so whenever we summon it. Now, the last thing we want to do, right, is we want to save this arrow scene. And we want to go back to the map. We want to make sure that in the kinematic body 2D, every single time we press the mouse button, we shoot it out. Okay, so if input dot is mouse, where's my mouse? Mouse is mouse. Okay, if it's, it's, oh yeah, it's action press, which is the left click, left click, UI left, wait, sorry, not UI left, it's the select, right? Oh no. Okay, uh, select, okay, you know what, let's press enter. Okay, where's my left click? Oh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, it's mouse button press. Yeah, mouse button press. This is the one. If mouse button press, uh, doesn't need to accept a one. I think it's just a FP. Okay. And then afterwards, what you want to do, right, is that you want to make this uh, node be loaded in. Okay. Honestly, I feel that I've taken, I've <laughs> went too much, and this is a bit hard. Okay. So what you want to do is uh, create a variable called arrow. Okay, what I want to do is make it a capital letter. Why? That's because it is going to be like a class. It's going to call it a node. So now this arrow variable, right, will store the uh, arrow scene, which is stored here. So you go all the way back down. There's this arrow scene here. Okay, so let's get this arrow scene. So what you want to do, right, drag and drop it here. And you'll get a directory towards the arrow scene. So now you get the reference to this arrow scene, you can actually uh, release it out. But this directory is just holding a string. So what I want to do, right, is that you want to say something called preload. So what does preload do? And what is it, what is it different from loading? 
what preload does, right, is loading a asset. You want to load a scene. This scene is not within the map. So how do I know where it is and what kind of data I hold? In order to tell the computer or to tell the game engine that, right, you say preload, which means I'm going to load all the data. I'm going to have it ready. And then every, anytime I want to press the button, it will immediately send out all that information and all that node data within with it towards into the map. Okay, so you hold all the data in this variable. And now what you do is that you instance it. Oops. All what you need to do is do instance it. So if I press the mouse button, I will call the arrow, tell instance it. Okay. Is button, mouse button, press expected one. I think you should just press, uh, what's it? I think you just press one. One meaning left click, I think. Yeah. Okay, so let's test it out. Okay, clear. I'm not clicking anything. Yeah, I want to disable music because I'm a bit annoyed with it. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, what's that? Not playing. Okay. And then the, I think the direction wasn't passed. Was it? Yeah. Oops, where's my arrow? My arrow scene didn't have the scene with it. Okay, yeah, I wasn't even attached. Yeah, attach it. Okay, so it's attached. I don't know why it wasn't there. So yeah, I should move towards the position. And to get the arrow. And lastly is the, where is it? Yeah, I think it's color. Color's wrong or something. I don't see anything. Unless. Okay. Position, velocity, velocity is a 2D. And it's going to be a vector 2D in the direction. You know what? Let's just, let's just give it a vector for now. For time's sake. Zero, uh, one, one. We should move off one direction in each. Exist. Okay, it has a scene. It's, it's moving, and it's, you can see it. So if the scene is there, uh, clicking it still doesn't do anything. And action press mouse is. I honestly think this is a problem. Not done. Martin Bosch. Arrow dot position. Oh yeah, I think it's also press it. Put it here. Arrow. Okay. Arrow dot instance. We call it an arrow variable first. Arrow is this. And then I will create a variable here. Let me just test it out. Arrow dot position. It's equals to your own position. Play it. Nope. But well, let's just press another button. Is action pressed? Just pressed UI and uh, accept. Yeah, I have to cut. It's okay, don't worry, I'll have to cut. Here you are, set, and it's done. Nothing happening. Okay. I will fix it someday. <laughs> I'll fix it some other day. Yeah, but that's an introduction to, you know, uh, instancing. If I actually create a instance, a clone of the scene, and then after it's in the layout, it will be the scene. Yep, and I'm going to debug this. For <laughs> okay, so that's it for uh, today. Um, yep, hope you have learned something about the code. I actually hope you want to take you know, something fun with it. There's a lot of things that you can do. Yeah, today I hope that I've shown you enough uh, functionality of what it can do.
and to get you, you know, thinking about what your ideas are. Right, so that's it for today. I'm going to be sitting outside at this time. And, yep. Yep, they always ask questions, by the way, uh, in the Discord also.